Hi, in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the DC motor. There are a few videos online, but they're a little bit confusing, particularly when it comes to um, this device which I've fashioned out of this little um, Ferrero Rocher Apple thing. Um, this represents my split ring commutator. This is where a lot of people get kind of a little bit confused. This actually makes a surprisingly good model because it's kind of spherical, so you've got two halves of a circle, and in the middle you've got a gap. Okay, now as we know, if you've got a gap, current stops, and this is important when you're looking at the DC motor. So let's have a look at how the circuit will be made up. First of all, just like when you're looking at the AC generator, you need a magnetic field. So I'm going to draw a magnet here, north-south. And remember, the magnetic field always goes from north into south. Now this thing, this thing is an actual moving part. Now when you've got a moving part like so, uh, and it's connected to a wire, what you need is some kind of like a brush for this to actually move against so that it doesn't tangle up. And that's what we actually do have. We have a brush, okay? It's basically like a flexible contact. So I'm going to draw it like that here and like that. Can you see a couple of brush points like that, okay? And this is going to be connected to the rest of the circuit. Now, what we're doing here is we're going to have a motor. Now, a motor has a source of current. So I'm just going to add a cell here like this. OK. Now, let's have a look at what happens uh, to here. Now, instead of using the right hand rule, this was for your AC generator. Generator, right hand. It's like that's how you remember it. This one's like the opposite. It's the left hand rule, Fleming's left hand rule. But the actual fingers and thumb actually represent the th same thing. So this is representing movement. First finger is field, so thumb movement. First finger, magnetic field. Second finger, current. Now, conventional current always flows out of the positive, so it's going to go out of here, up here, through the brush, into the split ring commutator, and it's going to go up all the way around and then back to the negative here. Okay, And the magnetic field is going to be this way. So let's have a look. Let's look at each different bit individually. Remember, the idea of a DC motor is that you spin this in one direction. What we're trying to do is figure out what that direction might be. Okay, so left hand rule, first thing, first finger field is pointing this way. Second finger current is going to be going this way on this arm of the coil. And the movement is going to be downward. So this side goes down. I forgot to mention, this is a coil of wire, by the way. I know it doesn't look like it, but that's what it represents, okay? And as this side goes down, conversely, this side must go up. So let's have a look if it fits our rule, okay? So the current is going downwards here. So first finger field, second finger current. Current is going down, and the thumb, which is the movement, is going up like this. So what happens is it goes, it turns like this and when it's at this point what's happening is the, the, the brush here is on the gap. So what happens is the circuit essentially switches off but because of the, the momentum of the wire it spins back around like this back to its original position. And we've got the same situation again. The current is still flowing up. So first finger field, second finger current. Movement is downwards. Can you see you've got this three dimensional array? Movement is down and this is going to go up. So it's always going to be spinning like this. 
and it's because this split ring commutator, when it goes into this position, you've got a gap and it cuts off the current, but the momentum helps it to keep turning. Okay, so it's just spinning like that. The ways in which we can make it stronger, first of all, have more turns in the coil. Secondly, a stronger magnet. Thirdly, stronger current. Okay, so more turns in the coil, stronger magnet, stronger current. That's how you make it turn faster. Now, some people get this confused with the other one, the AC generator. Now, in the AC generator, you've got a slip ring arrangement. So here's our old friend again, like this. Now, what would happen is if this was to go down, okay, the current would then go into this one. So what's happening is the current is changing direction. And what would effectively happen is with a slip ring, you just get this kind of movement like this instead of the one direction that you have with a commutator. Okay, I hope that's clarified that a little bit. Um, just to summarize, when you've got current in a wire, in wire plus magnetic field it gives us motion okay there we are that's your uh, DC motors sorted thank you for watching bye